My name is Joe DeZillo, and uh, I was asked, uh, oh, probably back in March, I got a phone call from Joanna. I don't know if you all know Joanna Swords. Probably everybody's familiar with her. She's been around since day one. She called me up and she said, I know that you uh, use a lot of our material. You've been involved with us since, I don't know, year 2000 or 1999. She said, you've had some successes with priests, talking to priests, bishops, etc. Would you be interested in delivering any kind of a, uh, a message to help some other people that maybe they can do some of the things that you've done? And uh, I said, sure. I, I, I've always told Father Gruner, whatever, whatever I can do for you, I will do, because I know it's for Our Lady. And uh, I've been dedicated to that. My wife, who was, I thought she'd be here this morning, but she, she, she's running around somewhere because we kind of work as a team and this is how we've done, we've uh, been successful in what we've done. But uh, what, what I'm here for really is, how do we approach parish priests to discuss the true story of Fatima? Now, you're probably saying, what's he doing with a flip chart? Well, I'm not big on PowerPoint and that kind of stuff. That kind of left me, a, when I used to deliver other presentations, it was with a flip chart. So, that's when I was selling other products. <laughs> okay. Anyway, these are our goals. We want to open the door, slam shut by John the 23rd in 1959. When you had the Vatican Moscow Accord in 1962. So how do we defend Our Lady against, against all these sacrileges that are going on, and especially today? When you refer to the, uh, the Angel of Peace, I don't know it verbatim, but Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I adore thee profoundly, and I offer thee the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of the name, Son, Jesus Christ, present in the tabernacles of the world in reparation for the sacrileges, outrages, and indifferences by which he himself is offended and by the infinite merits of the most holy sacred heart and through the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg of thee the conversion of poor sinners. Now let's think about that for a minute. We talk about sacrileges. I mean, what are some of these sacrileges that are going on today? Some would say it's, it's one of the masses, that, the, the changing of the mass. Uh, the outrages. Our Lady is systematically ignored, and she has been since Vatican II. I mean, how often do you ever hear much said in the churches about Our Lady, other than maybe uh, uh, a procession once in a while, that type of thing? But you don't ever hear much about Fatima. At least I don't know. Around here, maybe you do. I, I really seriously doubt it, but. Uh, you know, we have all kinds of things that are going on. You get into indifferences. You know, we have Freemasonry. They want all religions the same. You know, who's in charge of Freemasonry? Where does that come from? Well, it all comes from the devil. I mean, I, I, I like to use a pyramid myself. Uh, what I do is I put, the, uh, I put the devil at the top of the pyramid, then I put the elders of Zion, and then I put the Freemasons. These are the dupes. They've been duped by the elders of Zion to do all this work, to make our religions the same, to get away from the message of no salvation outside the Catholic Church, which has, doesn't even, you can't even discuss that anymore, whether you're in a, uh, any kind of a parish. I don't care what you say. The, the, the priest will always say, well, it all depends on how you interpret that. Well, come on, Father, what do you mean? No salvation outside the church, exactly what it says. So when you look at uh, you know, some of the stuff that is going on, what do we do about it? Again, I mentioned sacrilege. Can anybody else come up with any sacrileges you can think of that are going on? You want an opinion? Yeah, sure. Go I ahead. I think it's a sacrilege that they move 
the tabernacles to corners to of the, the church. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's a sacrilege that they took all those beautiful statues within many of our churches when I was a kid mm -hmm. and said, oh, you're, you're, you're idolizing them. That was false. Yes. Okay. Exactly. And they took beautiful churches mm -hmm. and they painted them white inside. And I think that's a sacrilege myself. Uh, I agree with you. It is a sacrilege. Did you do you were going to say something? Uh, think about it for a minute. When you talk about a sacrilege, the prime possession that we have is the Eucharist. Right? That's right. There's no reverence at all anymore. Even the railings have been removed. The have been removed. Uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, I don't usually watch this all the time, but once in a while I'll watch EWTN. They had a bishop, uh, I think he was from uh, one, of the, one of the Iron Curtain countries. And he was, he was talking to the priest there and he, on, the, on the TV show. And he said exactly what we're just talking about. He says, there's no reverence. He says, I have a very good friend of mine who is uh, a Muslim. And he says, they honor the Koran like we honor the host. And he said... If my Muslim friend ever saw what goes on inside a Catholic church today where you have people shuffling up the communion, getting it in the hand, not kneeling, some put it in their pockets, some walk in the back, some do whatever they want to do with it. And, and then you go, also you get into Marian dress. People are dressed like bums. Women got skirts up to here. I mean, this is all... These are outrageous, and they're, and they're, all, and they're sacrilegious. Uh, I mean, it's just... Uh, you go back to, uh, we mentioned John the 23rd. He ignored Our Lady as the Mediatrix. They, they just ignored her of all graces. Then you have Assisi, where they replaced Assisi with Buddhas, and they were doing all kinds of things there. In fact, uh, they did, uh, I wanna, I'm, I'm trying to remember now, they did, because they had, they had TV there, they were recording this. They did like uh, six or seven takes of how they were, like we were just doing a while ago, right? Six or seven different takes on how, you, you know, the Pope should stand here and the Muslim over here and this one over there. And, and it, was just, it was just a complete sacrilege and an outrage. Excuse me. Yeah. Was that at uh, Fatima? No, no, this was in uh, Assisi. Uh, Remember back in '86. Because going back, actually, didn't they do a service with with uh, in Fatima uh, with, with the Muslims, where they had uh, the Hindus. Yes, that was with Hindus, right? Yeah, Hindus. Yeah. Hindus. Yeah. Hindus. Yeah. Hindus. Yeah. Hindus. I, I don't know much about that one. Was in the chapel was the new uh, the, the new the John Paul Center. The silk of uh, the Trinity. Oh, okay. In, in Fatima. In Fatima. Yes. The big, uh, yeah, that big. The big I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, that's all right. That's okay. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, Didn't they have to reconsecrate the, the basilica? I think After so. Monsignor Gaha was yes. uh, kicked out? Yeah. Well, they may have. Yeah, uh, they did. Uh, did they? Yeah. Good point. Good point. The people of Portugal wouldn't go in until it was reconsecrated. Right. Yeah. You know, what this indifference to has caused is, you know, this, this false ecumenism that we have, it's, it's just caused so many problems. You can't. You know, the whole church has become politically correct in everything that they do, no matter whether you, who you talk to. In fact, I'll bring up a quick one on this indifference. This personally happened to me in the diocese that I'm in. A good friend of mine, this lady, she brought me an obituary that was in the paper, and it was praising. It was praise for this gentleman that just died. He was a 32nd degree Freemason. Went on to say all these things he did, you know. Uh, Eastern Star, he was responsible for this, all this stuff. And, he's, and he, then it says he is, uh, he's been devoutly involved with St. Peter's Catholic Church. This is the church that they were giving him a burial, a Catholic burial. Here's a 32nd degree Mason who's also a Catholic, if you want to call it that. So I wrote a letter to the bishop. I said, you can take the canons from 1917, which were very strong, and even the ones in 1983, which were more liberal, 
and you still can't belong to a secret society. So in 1917, that one did say Freemasons. 1983, it says secret societies or something along that line. He actually responded to me and he said that, yes, there is confusion with, with the Freemasonry, and, but we don't know what's in this guy's heart when he's dying. So I wrote back to him again, and I said, well, that's, that's not good. I, I can't accept that. You know, you, you as the bishop, do a pastoral letter or talk to your, your, your priest, your parish priest, and tell them to explain this confusion you're talking about when it comes to Freemasonry. Because there's Freemasons meeting with Knights of Columbus, Knights of Columbus meeting with Freemasons, the Cardinal, uh, Cardinal in New York. He used to do that when he was in Milwaukee. In fact, he supported it. Cardinal Dolan. Yeah, he's, you know, you see what he's doing with the parade now and all that stuff? Yeah, because they just, we went through that in Boston. Same thing. They tried that down there. Which makes me quite weary about the Knights of Columbus as well, because uh, of the involvement, you know, like there are some, some sort of involvement. And, you know, the parishes are, yeah. are supportive of the Knights, but I'm, I'm a little bit weary about it. Oh, you know, it's question. What constitutes secret uh, society or that? What constitutes it? Yeah. Constitutes it? Because don't the Knights of Columbus, and the reason I'm asking is I just recently signed up with the Knights of Columbus, but don't they have different levels in the Knights? Secret yeah, they do. Levels? Yeah. They do. Does that constitute them that being I, a secret I don't, society? I don't know. I don't, I don't know that part it's of it. It's really secret. <laughs> Uh, but I, but to answer your question, I think that Knights of Columbus started at McKinley. Is that who started? No, 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 no. I'm not trying to. Be no, no, no. I know that. But, but they, some of them have gone in that direction, exactly. just like the Jesuits have gone in the direction they're in. That's what I'm trying to. Do. You know, and then look what we have. I don't want to get into the Jesuit thing. Anyway, okay. How do we tear down the wall suppressing Our Lady's message? When you have, we already alluded to, you have poorly formed priests from Vatican II. Do they know anything about Fatima? No. They're, they do follow suit with this Vatican party line. I've had so many discussions with priests that don't want to hear it. They don't want to know anything about it. And most of them are afraid of their bishops. I mean, bishops, especially in the United States, got too much power. You know, you could, you could ask a priest, can you do the, uh, uh, the Latin Mass? And it's, got to, and it's up to the bishop. Well, it's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be up to the priest. But the priest knows what he, that he's got to pay down the road for doing it. But you've got to find priests that are willing to stand up and do what they should be doing to be real priests. They're confused, exactly. In fact, uh, you know, Chris Ferrara's book, False Friends of Fatima, I don't know if you've read it. Anybody read it here? Great book. Great book. So a few religious discuss it. It's just another apparition. I had, I had a priest say to me, I was, I'm talking to him, and he said, he's a parish priest. And he said, yeah, he says, I know there's all kinds of apparitions. He says, by the way, he says, would you like to uh, go, go on a, a, a mission with me? We're going to uh, pilgrimage. I said, well, where are you going? Medjugorje. I said, I backed off. I said, Father. You got all these Pentecostal movements, all this other stuff that's going on. Where do you think it came from? Padge Gori. So, very important thing here is, now I, I used to do, uh, my wife and I have done rosary rallies, you know, met with Tradition Family and Property. Have you heard of them? American East Fatima? You ever heard of that outfit, that group? They protest uh, uh, homosexual, all that stuff, you know, same-sex marriage. Do a great job. They go down to D.C., they pro pro-life, they're very pro-life. They get all these young guys, carry the banners, and say prayer after prayer after prayer, rosary after rosary after rosary. In fact, next week, they're in about four or 5,000 cities in the United States saying prayers for peace in the world through Fatima. So we've done that with them and done a few other things. But You got, a, you got an organization promotes Fatima. They promote this message, the devotional message, and that's it. They don't, 
go into the prophetic message. The message that says, we're either going to have, we're either going to be annihilated or we're going to have a period of peace. They don't go into that because they don't want to touch this thing. They don't want to offend the Vatican by saying that the consecration has never been done. I mean, I've had discussions with these people. And uh, needless to say, I haven't done many things with them. In the, you know, I, I still am in touch with them, but they do a lot of good work. But the prophetic message, they don't get into it. And, of course, we know the world the apostolate of Fatima is completely Fatima, is completely Vatican line. That's the old Blue Army. What the old Blue Army was good. So how are they going to enlighten the people if they don't give the proper message? Well, it's a bad, that's the whole thing. They're, they're giving the message they want to give. You wonder why the consecration hasn't been done. Well, people in charge are responsible for it not being done. So when you have this disinformation, it leads to silence. You know, bishops, priests, the schools and the seminaries, nobody talks about it. No discussion. There's no real understanding. A lot of confusion, misunderstood. Souls of the faithful. It's a victory for you know who, the devil. The devil's been winning since 1960, since they shut the door in 1959. So you have diabolical disorientation. So we got, what we have to do, our goal, another one of our goals is we got to educate the uneducated. How do we do it? We have to meet the clergy. Now, I don't know if anybody's involved right to life, that kind of stuff. There's always right to life. There's protests at uh, abortion, abortionaries. I'm sure they got them in Canada. They're aborting children up here just like they're aborting them every place else. We're having our march tomorrow. You're having your march tomorrow? Good, good. So, you know, there's, there's once in a while you'll see a priest there. Not very often. There's always ghosts. That, you, God bless him. Yeah, yeah. God bless him. Because... I've, I've talked to him about the consecration. And yeah. He, he doesn't say he doesn't believe, but he just keeps quiet. He says, I have to obey. He's afraid of the bishop. False obedience. Yeah. He has to obey. We've yeah. got that tomorrow, too. Are you from the Hamilton Stony Creek No, area? we're from the Mississauga area. Okay, we've got that going in, in our parish yeah. as well tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you got... You have this... The right to life... The demonstration, saying the rosary and all that stuff. The priest there, you get, get close to them. You know, warm yourself up to them. Get to know these priests. Whether it's at a picket, a pro-life banquet, that type of thing. Uh, any kind of a demonstration, like against same-sex marriage, that kind of thing. Wherever you can meet. Excuse We've been me. protesting outside of the mortuary across from the Mississauga Hospital. Mm -hmm. All for the 40 days. Yeah. yeah. We, it, so, you know, that's a good place to do it. Once a week for an hour, you know, or six weeks. You know? Yeah, that's great. But, you, that, but that's, these are the places you've got to meet these people. In the church, picnics, meetings, any place. Other rosary rallies, I mentioned TFP. Um, we, we've been doing a rosary rally ourselves, my wife and I, at this Precious Blood Monastery. It's all, they're um, cloistered nuns. Beautiful statue of Our Lady of Fatima outside with the, the kids and everything. I mean, it's really nice. We did it for like four years, maybe five years. Probably never got more than 45 people. This is in New Hampshire, right outside of Boston. Uh, but again, it, it's a situation where they don't, wherever the, if the bishop says do something, they'll do it. If they don't say anything, they won't do it. Um, I guess there is fear in, in priests, and again, like this gentleman mentioned, um, it's obedience, you know? And, oh. And that's the reason why they don't speak, where they, they're silent, and being silent is... Well, what happened to Athanasius? <laughs> I mean, he was kicked out, what, five times? Kicked out of the church, excommunicated. excommunicated. We've been bringing the uh, communion really back to our church. Yeah. Slowly. Yeah. The bishop said no, but every time he comes, we bring two more. God so bless you. We have right. a, yeah, one on one side front, <laughs> and, and ten in the other already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've uh, we've done protests like with this 
tradition, family, and property. Different plays and different things that they've had in the theaters. Jesus has two mommies. Uh, all this awful stuff down at MIT uh, College in, you know, in Boston. All these big universities that are doing a lot of these, putting these plays on. We actually shut down a theater in the, in the Boston area by protesting, going with these rallies. And in these rallies, you, you, then you will see some priests, but you got to get close to them. Uh, here's a, like, I, in the United States now, they're trying to merge these hospitals, the secular hospital with the Catholic hospital. We've gone back and forth on this. In fact, uh, in our own parish in, in Manchester, our own, our own diocese, uh, uh, Catholic Medical Center, they were trying to merge with, the, with this secular hospital. My wife and an older lady, probably 86 years old, 87 years old, they took the statue of Our Lady of Fatima for over a year. They were out in front of that hospital, through the winter, through everything. My wife would be out there shoveling snow and they'd be standing there. A couple of my grandchildren went over there with them, just praying and praying and praying, handing out rosaries, handing out uh, a lot of Father Gruner stuff, you know, the, uh, the little rosary booklet. And you'd be surprised the people that come up and down the street say, what are you doing out there? What's you know, the statue, this and that. So they're very inquisitive. Uh, as a result, it took about a year and a half, they didn't do it. Now, I, I think Our Lady had a lot to do with that. A lot to do with that. Um, but if you can join groups, and we mentioned uh, Knights of Columbus, but if you join these kind of groups, Holy Name Society, all this kind of stuff, any place you can go, like where you could uh, hand out literature, I know uh, Joanna's got a thing on uh, uh, weapons and all that stuff, but that, those are your weapons, all this literature. You, Father Gruner's got the best literature there is on the planet. In fact, uh, we have a, uh, uh, a church, uh, one, of one, one of the ones in our diocese that's an international type. Uh, we have, we have uh, uh, you name it, there's Spanish people, there's people from Vietnam, people from Africa, there's all over the place. And we distribute all kinds of material there because Father Gruner's got it in like four or five languages. And they accept it. And it's funny, you know, it's funny, the, the foreigners are more faithful than, than the rest of us. I mean, I don't know about here, but down there they are. So you gotta talk with the clergy, you gotta try and call a rectory, get a hold of the, try and talk to the pastor, you know, Father Smith, whatever. Discuss your concerns, you know, one, but it's gotta be one-on-one. -on -one. You, you need to get an appointment. He may say to you, look, I'm busy, this or that. Well, he said, can I call you back at another time? Can we talk another time? I said, Father, this is very serious. What does he want to talk about? I really want to come in and talk to you because I have 13 grandchildren. I'm very concerned about them. I know where the world is going. I've been a follower of Our Lady of Fatima for several years. And when, Our Lady, when, when Jesus' mother says, only I can help you, that means a lot to me. So this is what we're trying to do. So can I come in and talk with you? My wife and I would just like to meet with you. So then you go in. Uh, you pr first thing you got to do, though, you make sure you're prepared, like I put down here. You don't prepare this. Don't just walk in there and say, Father, I'm, Father, I'm, I'm Joe DeZillo, and we have an appointment. And, right, what do you want to talk about? Then you're like, ah, bah, 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 bah. you, you got you to gotta know what you're going to talk about. So when you go in there, you write down your questions before you go in there. Review the Fatima material. Organize your, you know, you organize your material. I call it a sales kit only because I, I was a salesman for many years. And uh, basically it's a bunch of folders. I don't know if I wrote it down here. And this, I don't know if you're familiar with all this stuff, but you got this here, True Story of Fatima. What we do is we bring these to, you know, the back of the churches, but when you're, when you're having an appointment with the, with the pastor, let me back up a step. This is the kind of stuff you have with you. You don't, you don't empty your whole thing, your whole uh, portfolio with the, with the pastor. You talk to him uh, about different literature that you do have. You know, all these different lists. Would that be in your portfolio? 
this is, be, this is what I, I always carry this with me. And then one of the questions that always comes up is, you know, why Russia? So I make sure I got it all underlined there. But one of the most important pieces of material, and I think it's the best, is uh, Phantom of Crusader 49. This has the magnificent promises for the five first Saturdays. You got to get some of these. But as I mentioned to you before, we have all types, types for the kids. I don't know if you've ever seen this one, Fatima Through the Eyes of a Child. So what we do, what we've been able to do, and this has taken you know, a few years, it's not something you do overnight. We've, we go to each, uh, probably three or four Catholic schools in the diocese. And if it's, you know, if it's just an uh, elementary school, we give them these. Supply the whole, however many kids are in the school with these. When you get into junior high school and high school, then you give them this one. True story of Fatima. I, can I just make a comment? Yeah. So this booklet that you have in your hands, um, bringing back this thing with the knights, I came across a very uh, strong objection from uh, one of my friends whose husband is a knight. And as soon as I started promoting uh, this, and I said, you know, why you guys who belong to an organization which is tied to the church, uh, can you do something about this? And as soon as I started speaking about this, and he saw that it came from Father Gruner, right. Father Gruner. Uh, he pushed his wife away from me and um, you know, said, we don't want to have anything to do with Father Gruner. Mm -hmm. So that's where the big obstacle is coming. Uh, even though uh, Fatima has been approved by the church, uh, we have statues of Our Lady of Fatima in, in our churches. Uh, there's a devotion, the Rosary devotion, and the Five Saturdays. But as soon as you mentioned Father like there's a bad step. Well, right, I, as if we are conspiring and we are trying to break. Exactly. And, and, it, it, and one thing they've said is like, why is he insisting in the consecration? There are reasons why, if our Lord wants the consecration to be done, it will be done. So that's the excuse. That's their that's their attitude. Yeah. yeah. And it's not uh, it's not up to Father Bruna to determine that he has to have the Pope to do this. That's the answer that I've been getting. But the, that's, that's, that's the, uh, the Vatican story. That's the world of Pasta de Fatima. This is the word that's passed down to... Well, let me, let me give you an example, okay? This happened to us, you talk about, last year, Father Gruner came up to New Hampshire. Now, we're only right next to Boston. We're in Nashua, Nashua New Hampshire, 20 minutes outside of Boston. In the diocese that I'm in, they sent a letter out. Same thing what you're talking about. Is he a priest in good standing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But they, bad, they badmouthed the, the, uh, uh, the rally. We had a rosary rally there. Well, I got Chris Farrar involved. I had him, he sent a letter to the diocese explaining, you know, he's in good standing. This is, because I, I told the Monsignor there, I said, this is so scandalous, it's unbelievable. I said, there's not a priest in your diocese that can touch this guy. He's going to be a saint someday. Are you kidding me? So, needless to say, that affected some of the people that came. But we still had 300 people at this rally, which was, it was, it was still a success. Now, you fast forward to this year, we have a, uh, we have a rosary rally Remember I, told, I was telling you we used to have it at the, the uh, monastery with all the nuns. This year we're having it at the cathedral in our diocese, the diocese that doesn't want Father Gruner around. Okay, okay, so he's not around. You could still deliver the same message that he's delivered, but you gotta do it the other way around. Now when I say we, we, we give the uh, true story of Fatima. We give the other booklet to all the kids. What did, what's the Communist Manifesto say? Get to the children, right? So in that sense, we got to be communists. We got to get this stuff into their hands. So you go in the back door on this stuff. Now the reason I mentioned that that uh, we're having this rosary rally in the cathedral. This could, this diocese is just it's primarily Norvis Ordo diocese. I deal with probably four different parish priests.
They know I'm a traditional Catholic. I go to a Latin Mass. I don't even go to any of those churches. And they seem to be accepting the message, whether it's because I'm coming in the back door, doing it, and the way I do it. I'm not, I'm not going in, I'm not right at them saying, you, you don't, do you believe that Russia was consecrated? That's the worst thing you could ever ask a priest. You're putting them on a defensive. You know, you gotta let, you gotta let them loosen up. You gotta, you gotta warm up to them. Uh, let me get on with this. This is just some of the, some hey, of the stuff that you have that. to add. I, I got a quick question. Yeah. You, you put on a big question mark to the priest, the previous. Uh, oh, over here? Yeah. To, in preparation, right there. Write down yeah. questions. Now, right. those questions are, you come up with the questions directing it to the priest? Yeah, to the parish priest. Okay. Now, you got this meeting with the priest. Give me a couple examples of questions you might ask the priest. Well, first of all, let me back up. When, when, we, when we go in... The reason I say be there early is get to know the people, you know, the, the, uh, the business manager, the girls, the, usually they're women that work there till 2 o'clock or whatever it is. Get to know them. Sometimes you may know friends of theirs. So you gotta, it's a warm-up process. It's just like selling, really. It's a warm-up process. You get to know these people. Same with the priest. You sit down with the priest. You know, you see a statue there or you see a picture on the wall, a nice look that's really beautiful. Some, that sometimes tells you a little bit about that person that you're dealing with. So you're asking them questions. Uh, you, talk, uh, you talk a little bit about, about Fatima, and you, 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 what I do is I try to ask them. My first thing is my concern. My wife sits there. I say, hey, look, at, uh, we're, we're here because we're, we're concerned about what's going on in the church and what's going on with our kids. And, you know, and, and invariably, priests say, because we'll say, Father, I was in your church, or because uh, I got kids in the Catholic school, going to graduations, this and that. I said, Father, it's embarrassing. I can't believe you're, you're up there at the pulpit, and you got girls in there that are half-dressed. Now, think about that, Father. Who's sinning there? That girl is creating more sins in that church than you can shake a stick at, and it's going on right in front of you. This, now, then we go back to sacrilegious blasphemies, all the rest of that stuff. I mean, you, you work that stuff in. But my whole thing is, when I first go in there, is, Father, can you help me? Can you help us? We're, we don't know where to go. We pray to Our Lady, and then you can work your way into Fatima, Father, and you find out what he knows about Fatima. Some of them don't know anything about it. And... and uh, that's when, that's like that one priest mentions Magigori to me, like it was, oh yeah, there's so many apparitions. I said, but Father, this apparition is for now. This is for now. This is, this is what Our Lady said was going to happen. This is happening. I said, then fast forward. I said, have you ever heard of Akita, Japan? Well, no, they never heard of Akita. When Our Lady appeared at Akita in 1973. Far worse than Fatima. It's the same, Ratzinger says the same message. This is what's going to happen. You know, you're going to be annihilated. People are going to wish they were dead if you're still alive. Priests are going to be against priests, bishops against bishops, cardinals against cardinals. It's going to happen, and it's starting to happen now. I mean, it's going on. It's going on. I see it. I see it where I am. You know, you got, you got some of these good old boy priests that just go through the motions. But to get back to what you were saying, no, I go in there, I try to be, you have to be, a good listener. You got to pick up on what the priest is saying to you. Well, you know what kind of problems you're having, this and that. Like I, what the priest told me, he says, "Look, at, I can't. I, I don't go there with this Fatima thing, with this consecration." I said, "Look, at Father." Now I should fast forward a little bit too. We had been, we had been, uh, we're, we were third order slaves of the uh, uh, of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and we had a statue of Our Lady of Fatima, a replica of the one downstairs. A pilgrim statue. So we took it all. We used to take it to people's houses that were in need, and then we started. Uh, I got the idea we should go really go into the into some of these churches, some of these schools, and that's how we started doing this. And then after a period of, uh, uh, we did it for maybe two or three years. Our our uh, uh, St. Benedict Center needed it back in their area. So I talked to uh, Father Gruner and. Uh, 
Anyway, I was, able, I was able to come up with a statue that was sculptured by, by a Spanish guy out in California. Beautiful statue, looks just like the one downstairs. We have it, I, have my, I had the Monsignor bless it. I asked the bishop to do it, and then he yelled yeah, where he was gonna do it. He's gonna do it. Well, anyway, I don't know if he ever did or not. But anyway, we now have that statue. I had a nice big box, it looks like a coffin, <laughs> that we take it around, you know, it's all padded and everything. We bring the statue to the schools, especially in May and in October. Those are the, those are the, big, uh, those are the big months. What we do is make sure, always make sure you have a, we have a, uh, you know, a calendar here, obviously a Catholic calendar. And we go to like the month, well, for example, this is May. Month of May, I line up, we line up the uh, different schools. We try to get, get Our Lady's statue into the schools with all that material, by the way. This is going on right under the nose of the bishop. All this Father Gruner stuff. And he's saying, I don't want anything to do with Father Gruner. But we're, we're doing this thing through the back door. Because let's face it, parish priests, bishops, are administrators. They're not doing what, they're not doing, they don't have the time to do the job they're supposed to be doing. They don't have time. They gotta worry about, well, we gotta go, I gotta go check this building over here, or that one over there, or this school is closing, or you know, whatever is going on. They don't have time to do what they're supposed to have time. And you think about it, we get back to indifference, we get back to sacrilege, we get back to all these things. What is, you know, what has caused this? Why don't they have time? The, the, first, the, the first thing a priest would say to me is, well, I don't have time to think about doing a Latin Mass. I, I'm just, I just had three parishes combined. Now I have three parishes instead of one. I said, well, you ever stop and think of maybe it's because of that Mass you don't say? That's why they're closing? Don't go there. That's the, that she says to me, don't, don't go there. I had a priest tell me that, and the same priest, he, he's telling me about his, uh, my, his sister's a, a devout Catholic, and she's married to a Baptist. I said, oh, really? I said, how long have they been married? About a week? He said, no, about 15 years. I said, I looked at him, I said, Father, aren't you a Catholic priest? Of course I am. There's, why didn't you convert him? Of course, now you know at the top, they're saying, don't worry about conversion. Don't, uh, don't do these things, you know? But in saying that, he says, look, don't, go, don't give me that. I says, Father, do you believe in... Do you believe in no salvation outside the church? He said, do you really think that God would allow all these people to die and go to hell? I said, well, there are saints that, saints that say there's more people in hell than there are in heaven. He says, well, I don't, I don't know as I really believe that. I said, Father, do you believe in the Catholic Church? He says, uh, of course they believe in the Catholic Church. I said, how many churches are there? Uh, one, right? Jesus started one church. I said, your brother-in-law, who started that church in the 1500s, 1600s? Luther or one of those guys? He quit that one and went to the next one. He said, well, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my last, this was at, this was at one of these banquets I was talking to you about, one of these pro-life banquets. So as, as the banquet ended, just fate, whatever it was, he's leaving and I happened to be walking right toward him. And I thought of something. I said, Father. I got to ask you one more question. He says, will I be able to sleep tonight? I says, well, I hope not. But he said, what's the question? I said, how many people were on the ark? He looks at me like, do you mean Noah's ark? I said, yeah, what other ark? Noah's ark. He says, well, I guess Noah's family. I said, yeah, eight, 10, 12, I don't know how many people there were. I said, where were the other millions? He looked at me and he says, well, they were waiting for Jesus to be born. <laughs> I'll see you. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's, if God was all, because he said God's all loving, he's, Jesus is all loving, all this, all this. Other. Yeah, he's all loving. If you do what you're supposed to do. You know, you could go into the Red Sea, all that stuff. You know, when the people say to you, well, he's going to save everybody. Baloney is going to save everybody. He didn't save the Jews. He said they were stiff-necked, right? Anyway, this is, this is important, if you ever get into that. How long did it take you to get to that position where you could go into a school and discuss that? 
Probably two years. A couple of years. The reason I asked, and being from Toledo, I called the Catholic bishops uh -huh. and said, would you please direct me to a priest that knows something about Fatima? And I think there's something like 246 parishes in that diocese. Just a minute, I'll send you so and so. Yeah. Okay, so and so, you're in Monsignor. Just give me the name of one priest that is familiar with Fatima. I'm sorry, I don't know. Any priest that is familiar with Fatima, 246 parishes. And the reason I'm here is prior, or primarily for the Swiss. <clears throat> then I went to three different priests personally. Mm -hmm. I prepared like you would, that bothers me because I spent most of my life in sales. But it actually happened by accident. Mm -hmm. So then I said, can we talk? Yeah, we can talk. And I love this one answer. Adam is all past tense. I said, how can you say that? Yeah, that's well, what I hear too. We have not had an atomic that's war. Too. Exactly. We have not had, this was his answer. No Catholic priest. Oh, I agree. I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. And, and then I called Our Lady of Consolation, which is in Cary, Ohio. And I said, uh, could I please speak to a priest who's familiar with that? Our Lady of Consolation. Or miracles. Thousands probably have been performed. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about that. This was a priest. But Father so-and-so, he might be able to talk to you because he's an older priest. And they are, give me somebody 60, 80 years old. I don't care, that's my age anyway. He transferred and I got a recording. I never really get a response. Huh. So I'm trying to put together my head, what can I do to reach these? And we have a new bishop, just within the last two weeks, finally got a new bishop. And I am going to try to make an appointment, but I want to be prepared like I used to be prepared when I was in sales. Just, all you got to, you know, you're a salesman, so back up. You know the sales process. Yeah. You knock on the door, you, you, you warm up yourself to, to whoever you're talking to, right? Yeah, cool, cool. Then you talk about your product. Let's, I mean, let's call a spade a spade here. This is what we're doing. I mean, we're, we're uh, I, I just had a, a lot of success selling, and then I, I become, became very involved with Our Lady. There were certain things that happened in my life, in fact, I'll tell you a quick story because I know I'm probably running over on this thing. But my uh, my brother-in-law, his wife, he called us up. He says she's got cancer. She's got it was uh, metastasized in her back. You know, she's got so many months or whatever it is, a year, or whatever. <clears throat> so my wife said we should go to Lords. So. Within two weeks, we went to Lourdes. It was like right before Thanksgiving in the United States. Well, you know, you're, you're a U.S. anyway. But it was right before Thanksgiving. So we go over there. We went to Fatima first, drove a car, took a rent a car, went, drove all the way up through the Apennines, went over to uh, Our Lady of the Pillar, went there. Then we went up to uh, uh, Lourdes. Went up to Lourdes, went through the baths. But prior to going through the baths, we got there, it was like 11.30 at night, and they don't close till like midnight. I don't know if I, you've probably been there or something. And it was drizzling rain. <clears throat> we kneeled down, we said the, uh, we said the uh, rosary twice, once in Latin, once in, in uh, English. And uh, next morning, we went, went through the baths, <coughs> did that thing, and uh, came back. This was like, in, uh, like I say, it was in uh, November. And Prior to this thing, when, when we had a rush to go over there, to, to set up making our plans to go there, I went to the bank and I said, I need some euros. And I had to go from the main bank to the branch bank. And the girl says, she brings the euros over and there's a guy standing there, a teller, nice tie, I never forget him. She said, what are you going to, what are you going to do in Europe? I said, well, we're going to Lourdes. And I quickly explained, well, my sister-in-law's got cancer and you know the whole story. And, uh, the teller looks at me like, he said, believe it. He's staring me right in the eye, he says, believe it. I said, well, I, I, I do believe it, and that's why we're going. He said, then he told me his story. He said, a year and a half to two years prior to that, 
he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Terminal cancer. He was going to be dead in six months. You know, his whole family kept saying, that, take, the, you know, take the, uh, you know, the stuff they give you, the poison. And he said, my niece said, uncle, don't do that. Don't do that. I got some water from Lourdes. Just drink it. It was only a little bit. He drank the water. Now I'm talking, this was two, two, two and a half years prior to that. And he said, you're looking at me. And this guy looked so healthy, I couldn't believe it. And every time I tell this story, I get the chills. It, it, it runs right up. Because then when we got back, I got a call from my brother-in-law. And it was in early March. Because she had to go for tests at uh, Sloan uh, Kittering in uh, New York City. They only take special patients there for cancer if they think they can help them. And uh, she had to get these, what do they call them, PET scans? Yeah. PET scans to see if she had, what kind of how the cancer had advanced. It was gone. It was gone. Today, this is six, seven years later, she's as healthy as, you know, looks great, full of exuberance. I mean, it's, I don't know how I got off on that subject, but. There's, uh, but I'm, what I'm saying to you is that we, I talked about the hospital merger. This was Our Lady. She's the one that did it, through my wife. I see it happen through my wife's, you know, uh, brother's wife. Uh, all these things, anybody that says Our Lady's not working out there for you, there, there's something wrong. So we have to get the message out. I hope I'm not getting behind here, but. Again, I mentioned to you before, appointment. You know, you got to warm up the staff, be courteous. You know, you may have mutual friends. And again, point out the different things that are in there and be sincere. I mean, you would be anyway. I'm not saying this thing just to, just to warm up to them, but you know, you know you're a salesman. They're, they're people that, they're people just like us. Uh, and if you happen to be in a parish that maybe speaks French or something like that, Father Gruden has got all the material for that. Uh, but you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta be, you got to know their phone numbers. You got to get to know their names. When you call over there, you say, Margo, it's Joe DeZillo. Oh, yeah, Fatima guy. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's what happens after a while. Uh, again, I, here you go. Be courteous, thank him. I won't take up much of your time. I know you're busy. Comment. Again, I said that probably, I was ahead of myself, I guess. We need your help, you know, worried about the children, grandchildren situation in the world. Uh, supporters of Our Lady of Fatima, we've been for years, been volunteers. We believe what she said, only I can help you. We believe that. We know that's true. Then you ask a question like, do you agree with what Our Lady said, Father? That she's the only one who can help. You know, you wait for a response. This will give you an idea where this priest is coming from. He may say, I don't want to go there. You can say, well, if you don't mind me asking, Father, uh, it's Our Lady that said that. You may not want to go there, but why, why did you say that to me? And just, just think, get his response. You know, you're a salesman. The best part of selling is listening. If you don't listen, then you don't know what, where to go with it. So I wait for a response. See what he doesn't know or doesn't know? Are your parishioners doing reparation? Then I get into the five first Saturdays. This is where you get the blanks. They don't understand the five first Saturdays. They just don't. Now, uh, Cornelia was talking about five first Saturdays this morning. They're, they're just it's the most important thing that we have. Five first Saturdays. Do they say the rosary? Do they wear the scapular? Those are all questions. Well, we don't, I have priests say, well, they don't do that anymore, the scapular. Yeah, we have a rosary. We say the rosary every week or whatever. That's about all you're going to get out of them. Yeah, we say the rosary. Well, believe me, you've got to say more than the rosary to get to what we want in the end. You know, I asked him about the scapular program. After receiving the responses, then you can assess, assess what, he, what he knows. Or if, is he of goodwill or isn't he? If he's not of goodwill, you know, sometimes with St. Paul say, you've got to dust your boots and walk off in the, the horizon. That's when you could say, ask about the consecration of Russia. What do you believe, Father? Or, or lead him in a sense that, tell me about your thoughts on Fatima, Father. Tell me about it. 
When somebody says, tell me something, that, that elicits a response, or solicits a response. Rather than just giving them an answer, don't, don't let them be able to say yes or no. He may say, don't go there, like I just said a minute ago. I guess I know this thing We're better than the chart now. <laughs> then ask if you can leave any holy cards, any kind of literature, and uh, do you have any foreigners? That's what I mentioned. Father Gruner's got all these brochures and stuff. Uh, can we join you? Do you ever have a rosary rally, Father? You do the rosary. Can we help put one on for you? Uh, and then what I also do is you could have like a, a I have like a three by five card. I don't have the card with me, but I keep track of the Fatima Center has a uh, distribution form. The materials that they have, they're all available. Okay? You take this, then you take, you, everybody should have a Catholic calendar. You know, a, a, a traditional Catholic calendar. Some of them have both, both, you know, with both saints days. Make a, make a note to yourself a month ahead of time or two months ahead of time, whether it's St. Joseph's Day, whose day it is, whatever day it is, and then order cards and order stuff from the Fatima Center, from Joanna. Get that stuff, then you can bring it into the different, into different parishes, and, and you can just go to the office, the girl that you now know or don't know. I, I would just like to leave this, and Father, uh, Father Flanagan said it's okay to leave it. Then you get in the habit of doing this. What it does is, you ask me how long it takes, what it does is it puts yourself, you put your face before them a lot. Your name is before them a lot. They associate it. In fact, I mean, I went out and made some cards up. You know, Our Lady of Fatima will pray for us. My wife's name, my name, phone number, one of the Fatima prayers on there. You know, and you leave it. But it's the constant follow-up that you got to do. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not something that's easy, but I'll tell you what, it's very rewarding. And uh, just another quick one. This particular priest, I'm going back two years, two and a half years. I talked to him about the five first Saturdays. He's, he's the priest that has all the foreigners in his diocese, in his uh, parish. I talked to him about, he says, yeah, we say the rosary, we do this and we do that. Scapular program, nah, they don't do that anymore. So, Father, this is what Our Lady asked at Fatima. You know, wear the rosary. I mean, say, say the rosary, wear the scapular. So, uh, after talking to him, bringing him literature, he called me up one day and he said, uh, do you have any scapulars, by the way? I said, yeah, I got some. He said, well, on the vigil of the Assumption, I wanted to introduce this to the parish. I'm going to ask them to stay after Mass and ask them if any of them have ever been indoctrinated, you know, not indoctrinated, inducted into the, into the scapular program. And if they haven't, they would like to, or if they like to do it again, stay after church. So I had given him that, that 200 of these things, 200 scapulars. So I see him on Friday, I think uh, the 15th was on a Wednesday. I see him on that, that Friday because I bring the statue that we have over to him for the assumption. I go over to pick the statue up. He's like, oh, he's lit up. He said, you won't believe this. I said, what? He said, I handed out 200 of these things. I didn't have any for the assumption. I said, well, then you need more, don't you, Father? Well, I don't need them right now, he says, but six months later, call me up. Do you got any more? I says, well, how many do you need? 200, 300? Well, yeah, if you got 300. He's gone through all those. Now, just as recent as last week, because that was a year ago. I've been, wor I've been working on him for the five first Saturdays. He says to me, he says, Joe, we don't have a Mass on Saturday. I said, well, go around the corner, St. Joe's Cathedral. They have a Mass every Saturday, 7, 7.30, whatever time. You can go down there. You can send your people down there. He says, well, on first, first Saturday, what we do is we say the rosary. I said, Father, are you kidding me? I think it's great that you say the rosary. Tell these people to hang around for another 20 minutes. Say the Mass. That's the most important thing, along with the rosary, so you do both. 
I brought some literature over to him last week, as a matter of fact. God be my witness. Go over there and he says to me, he says, uh, well, he said, uh, today. Today, he's saying his first Mass on Saturday. And, he, and he's had these, you know, uh, Fatima, this number 49 promises. I got it to him in Spanish, English, uh, you know, French. Any kind of language he wanted, and he's got it over there. But again, this is another thing you can do when you got, especially when you got foreigners, the bishop who doesn't want, say he doesn't like Father Gruner or whatever, you're handing it, they, they don't come over and look at this stuff. They don't even bother with what a priest is doing in their parishes. They got enough problems with what they're doing. Priest. Priest, as far as I know. He know you're a priest. You. What is the, uh, who determines the schedule of masses? Who determines the schedule for masses? Uh, the priest, right? Parish priest, yeah. So anyway, uh, you, need to, you need to be in front of them as much as you can to further educate them. You, other, for further education, go to monasteries. You must have monasteries where you are. Might be just nuns, or just just brothers. Go over there, start talking to them. Same thing. Uh, that's I mentioned Catholic schools. We got we're very involved in Catholic schools now, and we bring the literature. It's always oh yeah, bring me some more books. We got a new we got a new uh, first grade class. I need forty more books or fifty more books or whatever. So we now going to Catholic schools. Do we have to have any permission from the no. principal? I call the principal. We have now the Rosary Apostolate in the Catholic schools. I don't know if in your area, but we've done in our area. We started about seven years ago. And we go in and teach the children. No, no, the, the Rosary, I do understand yeah. there is, but what about uh, distributing literature at school? Do you have to go through the principal sure. or your parish? Yeah, your school parish? Parish. Sure. Uh, sure. Just a few comments. Yeah. Uh, it's too bad that you have sort of speak about your experience in this. The United States, yeah. Parishes. But here it's a little bit different. Right. This sneaky approach you mentioned, I will not work here. You know, sneak in something. But they're not sneaking anything in. No. Yeah, I understood that you are uh, sort of take it upon yourself, or I mean with your followers or groups, just to hand out this, you know. But uh, here we need a permission, yeah. number one. Oh. Whether you really want to leave a, a, a material at the parish church. Right. Oh, I, or never I said okay. you can and go, go, not get into the schools. You know, because before they enter, they ask you right away what you want to hear. That's oh, right. absolutely. I, I don't say we go right into the schools. No, we're, we're no, okay. I, I'm, I'm probably going too fast. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, sneaky approaches are good. And the second point is that, and the lady brought it up about this sort of. Um, this like for Father Brunner and uh, as, as, a, as a person and what he does. Okay, uh, obviously, um, in one, every letter of Father Brunner, uh, he, he tells us he wants to mail this material to every priest, to every bishop. Right. Good. Okay, so from this point of view, one can assume that certainly the majority of priests uh, know about the value, right? right? Because they have already received files of material, including myself. Right, 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 right. Okay, now, why then then the parish priests are so reluctant to speak about, and particularly speak about Father Gruner's fighting uh, apostle? Right. Okay, now, I'd like to give you the answer. Because in 1990, Every priest was given was uh, given a letter, and uh, unfortunately I could not find it. And I still have it. That where the priest were instructed to keep distance from Father Bruno, because at that time uh, Father Bruno was somehow, um, well, he was actually uh, uh, we were told that he is not in good standing mm -hmm. in the church. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, over this now, uh, years and years of controversy with uh, Fatima, uh, right. uh, Fatima, 
Right. Okay, and tonight, uh, he's in good standing. You know? Right. All right. But the image of Father Gruna as a priest, uh, not in a good standing, is still present in the, the priest's mind. You know? Right. They see some, I mean, I talked to some, I see it on the radio, as, still as a renegade. You know? Right. And so, what I now suggest is that the individuals should write to, I mean, you speak here in Canada for them, you know, should write to the bishops that this, that this so-called ban on the parish priest to keep distance and to sort of stay away from him, mm -hmm. that should be lifted, you know, because mm -hmm. after all, this letter was written in 1990s, so we talk about almost 25 years ago. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So things have changed. Sure. And uh, more came to light about sure. this. You know. I've done it. I've written to my bishop, uh, Colonel Collins. Unfortunately, <laughs> he wrote the oldest to They don't reply. You know. mm -hmm. So I don't know what. Uh, but anyway, I, I told him it's about time to. Uh, Lift this ban, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But so far, as I said, nothing is for I know. Right. Nothing has happened. You know? And when I talk to uh, for my fellow priests, they they still sort of laugh about. You know? Yeah, yeah, but you, you know, I can understand what you're saying. But then think about it. Think about his message. Right? Yeah, but, you know, Joe, Joe, you mentioned that you saw this yourself, that yeah. priests are scared, and you are right, yeah. and our priest acts constantly, yeah, right. contrary to right. the bishop's instructions. Right. Right. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> well, he takes a great risk to say the priest. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay, mm -hmm. so here's the really hard. They, they just follow the bishop's instructions and advice. Right. You know? Okay, right. and that sort of put, uh, cuts off. <laughs> A dialogue. Right. Uh, well, exactly. Yeah, okay. right. This is the point that I want to make. Right. So they should write to the bishops and say, look, it's time to give the parish priest the freedom to talk about these things. Uh, the father message and so on. And yeah. then, you see, every time the Father Luna organized a conference, and I was in two in Rome and uh, mm -hmm. in, in, uh, here in, in, in uh, Mississauga and so on. Mm -hmm. I, I see two, uh, two or three priests, and only one from our diocese, yeah. in, uh, including two, including myself. Right. So where are the other 350? Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is an evidence that they stay away because uh, they still have the instructions to stay away. Yeah. You see, yeah. this is very yeah. much appreciated that we are hearing this from yes. Father, because yeah. this is the situation yes. here in Canada. And um, your approach, because yours is based in the U.S. here in Canada, and I'm glad that Father brought this up because we didn't know where the problem was. And now by saying that, like, yes, maybe we should, we should probably uh, write a letter to... to well, this, to is, this is what I said happened to us. This is what happened to us. Exactly. This happened to us last year. Okay. Because, all, and as you see, like, we have this conference here, and I'm, I'm surprised that we have one priest here attending this uh, conference where... Right where are all the other priests and mm -hmm. there is a ban and there is a fear in all our priests and we really have to pull this out now to 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 the well, archbishop we, or to the archdiocese i i, I agree with you. maybe you that's know, because maybe. yes things have changed and people are realizing like everybody has access to the media to right. the internet and if we want answers we don't even have to go to the priest we can go straight to the to the to to the vatican yeah, but that's that's very true. But what what you know you're talking about, you're talking about fighting city hall. You're talking about fighting the Vatican. Who's at the top of the Vatican? I mean, what is part of the third secret? The apostasy is at the top. I, I'm just saying, but it's very similar. We're talking about the same thing. Your bishops are no different than the ones we got in the United States. You know, they have to be of goodwill. If they're not of goodwill, nothing's going to happen anyway. But you are right. But, 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 but I got to address the other thing you said. Don't ever think that what we do is sneaky. I know you're, you're, you don't speak, you don't understand my English maybe, but this material and stuff that we bring into these schools, the principal knows about it. I've already met with the principals. I've already met with the priests. They know. I don't leave anything. In fact, I had, I had that happen to me. The mother superior said, 
what she, I'm saying she, is that this is the way we are approaching. Oh. Is like sneaking into the church and asking the priests yes. to. Well, but, we've, but they've tried the, the other. We've tried the other. We tried it. We tried it in my diocese. Chris Farrar wrote the diocese I don't a letter. Think it works here in Canada. We probably have to go. To it didn't work there. It didn't work. But what I'm saying to you is, my story now is that next Saturday I'm doing a rosary rally in the bishop's cathedral. This is the guy he knows. He says, he told him on senior, he says, if he mentions Father Gruner's name, he can't do the rosary rally. What do I care? I won't mention his name. I'm just the, I'm the messenger. I'll deliver the message. That's all I care about. What do you think? That's like people talk about Freemasonry in the Vatican. Who cares if the Pope is a Freemason? As long as he does Freemasonic things, right? I mean, let's call a spade a spade. That's part of the third sacred. Apostolate. I mean, the apostasy in, in the church. We know that. Everybody knows that. You're, what you're talking about, this is the apostasy in the church. I don't know if a letter would do any good or not. They still might say, you know, so what? I mean, Father Gruner's one of 403,000 priests. There's probably three that agree with him. Or maybe they do agree and they, they silently agree with him. But also, I mean, the parishioners too are very loyal to their parish priests. Why so? Now, if the parish priest does not uh, encourage them, or even directly says, look, I, I don't know. I understand that, but you've got to convince the bishop. All I'm saying is, is that when is a priest going to stand up against the bishop? That's what I'm saying. You, that's what has to be done. Because the, priest, the parish priests know that could be the end of his place yet. So what? Correct. So what? Has to be them, that's why yeah, but so what? So then you become a traditional priest. I mean, then you, be, you go on your own. No, there's, no, there's, no, everybody's no, looking for a traditional no, priest. What do you mean to, to be on your own? There is no such a... a independent priest. I mean, there's independent priests. You're a priest forever, right? Yeah, but you cannot be on your own. You have to belong, I can you go to a, or to the a parish, or as you call it, you cannot be a vagi, you know, mm -hmm. sort of, uh, sort of say, okay, I, I'm a priest and I now uh, act uh, totally according to my right. own understanding of that, it's not impossible. Right. Well, you know, Father, I, you know, we could beat this thing to death here, but there's, I don't have any more time to talk about that, okay? If you want to talk about it after, that's great. But all I'm trying to say is you have to, to, to do these kinds of things. You've got to get to know them and be concerned about the priests. I mean, I hope I didn't come across as being too uh, aggressive, but we bring, with the material we bring, they, they look for that material. Now, we've had uh, one mother superior. They change every three years in this, this precious blood. She got some static. Don't bring anything in here from the Fatima Center. Okay? Don't bring anything in there from the Fatima Center. Even though these are beautiful cards, beautiful brochures, things on, you know, you know, you know the stuff that's out there. I didn't do it. So I waited out. So three years later, a new one comes in there. She lets me bring anything I want to bring up. She's not afraid. Too many priests are afraid. You brought up a lot of valid points, no doubt about it, and we, we all need to stand up on our feet and start, start working, you know. But uh, um, we need to encourage the priests, and especially here in Canada, as, as Father said, uh, I think the hardball is really uh, reaching out to, to, to the archdiocese and, and get the bishops to yeah. lift up the ban and, and you know, 
give power to the parishes because by giving power to the parishes, then you know, then all mm -hmm. parishes will come along. Right. Because it comes right across that uh, it's disobedience if we oh, yeah. if we go the other way around, and that's where the op the big obstacle is. You know, you got to go back through church history, though. You got to go back to Athanasius, Basil. So you got to go to all these. have uh, church history. That's, well, I see, understand. I've, I've learned a lot about the church history yeah. going through the internet. I've not learned from my parish. Well, you won't so learn. Not, I will never. You won't learn. And, and you know what? For the first time today, uh, when I assisted the mass with Father Gruner, yeah. that's the mass that I remember in my very young age, you like four or five years, assisting a mass like that. And that was my early years. And after that, I can't remember having seen a mass like that. That's right. So. Well, that's what I'm saying. This generation is lost, oh, totally. Wow. And a lot of young priests that have joined the priesthood, they probably don't even know that something like they don't this know. happened before. They don't know. Yeah. They don't know. They don't, they, it's, it's lost. Lost. Well, we it's lost. lost. We're trying to regain it. We're trying to do as little bit little bit we can do. We're trying to do that. You know, and, and I, I didn't mean to offend you at all, Father. Believe me. I hope I didn't offend you at all. But all I'm saying is, is that there are priests that got to stand up and say, hey, look at Bishop. I don't agree with you. This is my parish. I can say what I want to say in there. Well, that, that, that you're saying no, but that's not that's not where it's at. Why do you think that? You know, we talk about these. First, let's talk about five first Saturdays, okay? If a if a, uh, you, I don't know if you do them or not. No, no, no this is not the issue. This uh, five is really five. Uh, five, uh, uh, you know, say he can, he can uh, say as much as he wants, but about. The, let's say, let's say the consecration of Russia. Right. You know? So, um, let the Irish priest bring up this subject, and then you will see the first thing that they do mostly. You need only one parishioner calling yeah. up the chancery office and say, "Look, my Irish priest talked about." Uh, oh, I I agree. I, I agree. I agree with what you're saying. But, but let me ask you a question: If you did that. Then, th then that message would get around that diocese that this Father, uh, Father Felix or whatever his name is, is talking like this. You're bringing it up. Yeah. It's not being stomped on like it was stomped on in 1959. You've got to bring this information back. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to instruct priests that don't have the proper formation to begin with. I know what you're saying. You, they're, they're your well, boss. He, wow. he will be the victim for, for, for all, you know, so, so he will be the, be the victim. And because he will reach out, okay, he said, uh, spoke about consecration of Russia, right? But uh, ultimately he did sort of go against the bishop's instructions because yeah. it ultimately comes back to Father Gruner, right? right? I mean, everybody knows Father Gruner in our, right. our right. diocese, you see? So, right. And, uh, well, maybe we should get material that doesn't have, have the Fatima Center on it. Oh, we're, we got to wrap it up, okay? Sorry. But I mentioned the statues to you. You can get a statue of Our Lady of Fatima. You could bring it around, do exactly what we're doing, and that, that really seals the deal, okay? There's this gentleman, uh, David Rodriguez, out in California. He sculptures them. You can get one that looks just like the one downstairs for under 1000 bucks. Believe me, that goes a long way goes a long way. You get somebody to pitch in with you, whoever you're going to try and approach these different parish priests, that op she'll open the door for you. There's my wife back there now. She'll tell you. Right, Jenny? I'm the transporter of her. <laughs> Instead of setting up where she's going next. And everybody wants her constantly. I mean, it's... That we bring her to the bishop's cathedral chapel. People are there every day. It's probably the most visited church in the whole city. And... Um, People write in a book, we put a book there, please our lady help this, that, or the other thing, and people write in that book. It's like a heartfelt thing. They just feel so warmed up to her being there. That we've got a light on her, her eyes are glass so they look real, and people just respond to her like we can't even believe it. She, she will open the door for you, believe me. But, and that, that's like I say, that, this really seals the whole thing. If you, can, if you can do this, and a lot of people think, well, I can't have $5,000 for a statue. All right, that's just under $1,000. That's the guy's name. And believe me, it'll go 
It'll open so many doors for you. But again, we covered a few things in here. When you go talk to these priests, you, you, gotta, you gotta know what you're talking about. I'm not saying that I know what I'm talking about all the time. It's a few things I know I try to pass on. But again, you're a salesman. Listening is the best part of, of it all. Then he'll tell you where he's coming from, where he thinks, I can't say anything because of this. we had this one. The bishop, same as what Father's saying over there. He knows the bishop doesn't believe in it. He, he doesn't believe the consecration, all this, this stuff. I want to hear anything about it. He says to me, we've got to go slow with this thing. I said, all right, so can we bring the statue? So, brought the statue. Anyway, thank you very much. Father, we'll see you. See you around. I have come to warn the faithful to amend their lives and ask pardon for their sins. They must not continue to offend our Lord, who is already deeply offended. Final vision on October 13, 1917. Our Lady silently held out the scapular, a gesture which indicates that she wants everyone to wear it. Our Lady said, if my requests are not heeded, Russia will spread her errors throughout the world, raising up wars and persecutions against the Church. The good will be martyred. The Holy Father will have much to suffer, and various nations will be annihilated.
The Blessed Virgin gave us a message how to have world peace, that only, that only she can help us. But perhaps we don't get enough perspective. We say, well, nothing dramatic has happened. And it's because our commentators, our newspapers, our editor writers, the people that we really pay attention to, the people that speak on television in the mainstream press and so forth, people who are under the pay of the enemy often, have yet to point out to us that since we have despised Our Lady's message as a, the human family, we've despised it, there have been 1,686,570,000 violent deaths as a direct result of ignoring Our Lady of Fatima. That is, again, one billion. That is one with nine zeros after it, plus another 686 million people who have died violently for the one simple reason that we've ignored Our Lady of Fatima. We could point out, perhaps another time, that if this is not enough perspective to give us that in these 95 years of ignoring Our Lady of Fatima, we have paid a tremendous price. But as bad as that is, that price will be doubled or tripled in the next couple of years if we ignore her much longer. Just a few months ago, the world's population passed seven, seven billion people. Seven billion people. <laughs> Scripture tells us and other prophecies tell us that one third to two thirds of the entire population of mankind will be wiped out in this war to come. I don't know what it takes to wake us up. Maybe we have to find it on NBC or CBS or some commentator in the New York Times before we finally take this seriously. And maybe we say to ourselves, we take it seriously, but I think we don't take it seriously enough. We have many priorities. Sometimes I wonder how I get through my day between what I'm supposed to do today, between getting up and doing my reading, uh, doing my other work, talking to people that, that God wants me to talk to and so forth. And we only all have 24 hours a day. And I'm sure that my life is not as busy as the bishops and the, and the pope. But we must make this priority number one. There is nothing more serious, nothing more important, nothing more urgent than Our Lady's message at Fatima. And this is something that I don't know how to say. I remember getting a letter from an older bishop many years ago. I think he was in Ottawa. And he said to me basically in his letter, Father Gruner, if you would not raise your voice so much, if you would not yell at us, we might start paying attention to you. And I said, wrote back to him and I said, I appreciate very much your interest and your concern and your advice. Now, if you can tell me how I can do that any better than what I'm doing and get the attention, I'd be very happy to do it. I hate yelling at people. I hate raising my voice and I hate trying to draw attention to myself. But there's no other way around on this message. If there's something more important and certainly yesterday we were in this March for Life here in Rome, and the number of people that are killed by abortion since about 1980-75, by the statistics we, we looked up, is about 1,300,000 people. And by war, there's another 78 million people. And then by government murder, not only in Russia and China, but other parts of the world, 238 million people. These are catastrophic, and they lead us to think that we are, as Pope Pius XII, rather Pius X, St. Pius X said, that we are in the days just before the coming of the Antichrist. These proportional, these things that are happening to us, which Pope Benedict, when he was Cardinal Ratzinger, said, that refer to this Fatima message is found in sacred scripture, that we are living the times of the apocalypse, and although we can be distracted with everything from daily newspapers to uh, 
new movies or whatever else it is that, that, in, that entertains us, these things are happening around us and they're happening every day. And they're happening in such a way that uh, how can we deny that we're living in, if it's not the apocalypse, if it is not the, the time coming before the Antichrist, it is the best, uh, shall we say, um, preview or uh, event which would, the world has never seen before. 